Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first talk of the security seminar here at Purdue University. Uh, this is also offered as a course, uh, CS591S. And if you are taking this uh, for one credit, then what you need to do is to sign your name uh, at each lecture when you attend the lecture. Um, if you miss uh, less than two lectures, then you are fine. You will still be able to pass the course. If you miss more than two, then for every one that you miss over two, you have to watch a DVD of a lecture you missed and then send a summary of the talk to me. Um, so that's the policy for this course. And today we have um, Dr. Steve Elliott from the School of Technology um, to present. Uh, he's assistant professor of industrial technology here at Purdue. And his research interests are in biometrics, signature verification, mobile computing, electronic and mobile commerce, and logistics and supply chain management. He has been uh, involved in a number of activities related to bioinformatics, uh, sorry, biometrics. Uh, in particular, he's actively involved in setting the standard in biometrics. He's involved in the national uh, body for setting the standard. So here is Dr. Elliot. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. I'm going to be talking today um, about biometrics. Uh, how many people in the room know something about biometrics? Kind of see where I'm heading. I know you two do, so. All right, cool. Excellent. All right, so who am I? I guess that's one of the questions that we're going to be asking ourselves today. And how do I know that I am who I say I am? And would you know me from my fingerprint here if I just put this up? I remember a couple of people from a, a trust and privacy class I recognize. Um, do you know who I am if I just got my fingerprint up there at all? Not at all. So for those people that think that biometrics may be all identifying, if I just put my fingerprint out there, I might not know who I am unless I tie some data to me. So in some, some respects, and we'll probably cover this in a different class, some people argue that this is actually privacy enhancing. So we're going to go through today and examine some of the biometrics. Um, we also have a website available for you to go on to. And uh, I'll post the slides or I'll send the slides across for them to get posted in multiple areas. So uh, if you have any other additional questions, let me know. I guess in the first uh, stage of discussion, and I teach a biometrics class tonight, in fact, I'm going to pose this question to my students and ask them, how do you, def how do you know that I am who I say I am. How do you know I did not send a false bio across this afternoon or last night? Um, how can you prove that I am the right person? And then after all of that, what kind of credentials do I use to tie my biometric to that identity? Uh, you may have various different identities. Um, in fact, I have two legitimate ones in my passport that I, was, I should have brought along. But um, I have two different dates of birth in my passport, both on, on legal documents. So that's always very interesting. Um, and then the second question is, am I who I say I am? So if I say I'm Steve Elliott, you've got to go out there and prove it and uh, find out the root document or the seed document that actually justifies who I am. And eventually, I'm going to tie that into a biometric. So when I travel into the country every so often, I put my fingerprints down. I give the uh, immigration people my picture of my face. And then they have to go and authenticate it against um, my passport, and hopefully they choose the right visa in there to make the right call. So biometrics um, basically is one way of identifying an individual's identity. There's m many other ways of doing it. As you're probably aware, there's a token, something I have. All right? We all have some form of credit cards, Mac Stripe cards, RFID cards, either a secret or a knowledge, such as a pen, what I know. And what I am or what I do in terms of a biometric, right? And we all have various biometrics. Um, we don't always have the same biometrics. And that's one of the research challenges uh, that we have in biometrics is trying to fit, pick a biometric. Which one do we have that we all consistently have? That's not an easy question. It may sound pretty kind of a stupid question, but we don't all have good fingerprints. We don't all have uh, five digits on our finger, on our hands. Um, we may not have um, an iris. We may not have an eye. We may have just one, not two. 
Um, we may have no voice, we may have a voice. There's so many different combinations and we've got to pick the right biometrics. So that's always a, a particular challenge. We typically go for face and fingerprint for immigration and that itself provides uh, quite a lot of challenges as well. So what I am, what I do, are uh, all parts of biometrics. We use biometrics every day, although not in the kind of the technical sense, but typically we use biometrics. For example, I'm kind of learning people's faces. I don't have a name to most people, although I've seen a couple of people before, and I've seen at least three people here that are in SPAF's class. And so I'm updating my template to kind of figure out who you are, and that's the same way a biometric goes along. I see an image, I, and I kind of load it up into my database, and if I'm walking around campus, I'll kind of update it. Um, you'll probably recognize me if you're in CNAI, if you're in the College of Technology, and you'll probably recognize me where we have lab and, and bearing for this uh, privacy class. And if I see you at the rec center, I might do a double take and say, I think I know that person over there at the rec center. And I'll update my template and information to say, oh, they're also at the rec. How many people have gone to a different country and recognized someone that they thought was very similar to someone that lived just down the road or they've been to college with? You kind of do a double take. All right, we, we always do that. I was in Seoul, and uh, I could have swore blind that I saw someone that I recognized from Purdue. And that's kind of on, but they were wearing a Purdue t-shirt, so that was my first uh, giveaway. And then I recognized them, I actually had them in a class, and that was very unlikely. I don't know why they were there. They certainly didn't come from there. They didn't live there. They were on, they were, they were on a conference, and it was a different conference to what I was on, and I wouldn't have put them there. And so then I had to update my template. I kind of took a second guess, a second look, and said, I recognize that individual. Um, I'm going to update my template. The more times that I recognize an individual, the better my template goes and the easier it is for me to remember an individual. If I had a student two years ago, I might remember who they are, I might remember their name, but if they just came once a week to my class, I'd probably say they were familiar, but I might, not, I might forget their name and their associated data. Biometrics works in the same way. The more times you visit a particular sensor, the more updating we can do, the better we can train the algorithm to learn you and, and figure out the different intricacies, and then we can go ahead and improve our performance. How many people here have, a credit, have an account with PEFQ? Keep your hands up. How many people here have used the fingerprint machine at PEFQ? A couple of you. All right, so initially we'll take a look at your fingerprint, and as you go on, it will update the template. If you go ahead and uh, use it once a year, your performance may not be as good as if you use it once a week, all right? Because your fingerprint may have changed. It may have got a cut on it. Your skin may be dry. The weather may be different. If I take a fingerprint of you today, your skin is likely to be very moist. It's, it's hot out there. Um, if I was to take a fingerprint with you in uh, December time, when it gets a little chilly here, and maybe you know February when it gets very chilly here, then uh, your skin will change, and your fingerprint will change, and your performance of that fingerprint sensor will also change. So there are a lot of variables that we need to discuss and, and figure out. But we basically use biometrics every day uh, when you're on the phone you would listen to someone's voice. Now what trips up you in recognizing an individual? What factors will trip you up in, in recognizing an individual? Anyone spoken to someone on the phone and, and thought it was someone else? Okay, until you, you make a mistake. All right, something else? It's a dark room. Yeah, if it's a dark room, yeah, I m might not recognize them. Or if I'm in a different location and it's, it's dark outside, I may have, I walk down the street and see you coming out of the bars or whatever. Um, it's a little early in the semester for that, I guess. But if you see you come out of the bars, I might take a double take, might not recognize you, it might be a little dark. Something else? Other factors? How many people know identical twins and can tell them apart? Hairstyle or clothing changes? Yeah, that's right. I, I associate, you know, when we do the global features, we look at you know, as, as your face. If all of a sudden I come in with a beard or something, you might take a, you might laugh, but then you might take a double take and, and, and move on. Or someone 